Education Station. Today we have myself, Christina, and then we have Julia over here who is our animal care specialist with her fantastic animal, Oscar. I will be the one answering questions, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment them and uh, put them underneath our post and we will answer them live for you. Otherwise, Julia will take it away with Oscar. And if you enjoy this at the end, be sure you also share and like so your friends can also meet Oscar as well. Yeah. Go ahead, Julia. All right, well, like Christina said, my name is Julia and I am one of Oscar's keepers here at Blink Park Zoo. And like all the other animals that you've been seeing in these videos, he is one of our ambassador animals. So he lives behind the scenes and he helps us educate um, at schools and libraries, nursing homes, daycares, all around the state about everything that is so wonderful about porcupines. Uh, he is a North American porcupine. He is my favorite type of animal, so you guys are going to hear a lot of really great information about them. Oscar is almost two years old, so he would still be considered uh, young for his age. And he came to us from a zoo out on the East Coast. So he was born in human care and will remain in human care for the rest of his life. And he is also part of a species survival plan. So a lot of zoos in AZA are part of a species survival plan so that we can ensure they have nice healthy populations in human care as well as protecting them in the wild. Now porcupines are a type of rodent. So that means they're related to animals like rats and chipmunks, uh, squirrels, guinea pigs. And some things that all rodents have in common is their teeth. So rodents all have a set of incisors, so that is gonna be your front two teeth, and those teeth are constantly growing. So rodents chew on hard objects like wood and bark on trees to file those teeth down and keep them the appropriate length so that they can continue to eat and then also make sure they're sharp enough to eat those hard food items that they like. Um, so right now, Oscar is eating some rodent block, um, which is, it looks like this. It's just a little block with some nutrients that rodents need um, to maintain a healthy system. He also has apple and sweet potato and kale um, and some romaine that we're feeding him too. Romaine is his favorite food, um, so I like to use that for things that are a little new to him. He hasn't been in front of the camera before. Um, so it's new and exciting, so we're gonna give him some romaine to keep it a really positive thing. Um, and as his trainer, I use positive reinforcement to encourage him to do new things like going on different types of programs, meeting new people, um, going into a crate for the first time. That was um, a big training step for him. And we do that all through positive reinforcement. Now, there are lots of different types of porcupine. You might wander around a little bit, make sure there aren't any better snacks hiding somewhere. Um, so, some porcupines are what we would call a tree porcupine or an arboreal porcupine. And that would include North American porcupines and prehensile-tailed porcupines. So, his stature doesn't really make you want to believe it, but he, in fact, spends most of his time up in a tree and he has really long nails to grip into that bark and climb up those trees, and he's incredibly strong. I watched him climb up things in his enclosure only using his arms. Um, so even though he is a thicker, sturdier porcupine, he is very strong, so getting up into those trees is no problem. And you might have seen as he turned around, he has a short little tail, and that also helps him while he's climbing. Um, when he climbs out of a tree, he likes to climb uh, kind of backwards down it, and he'll use that tail to feel his way and test branches before he steps on them and make sure that they are strong enough to hold him. Now, prehensile-tailed porcupines are another tree porcupine, and they are found in um, Central and South America, and they look a bit different. They only have quills on their body. They don't have any fur. And they also have very, very long prehensile or gripping tails. So they're gonna look quite a bit different than Oscar, but they still spend a majority of their time up in trees, just like he would. And then we have our land porcupines or our terrestrial porcupines. 
And those are the crested African porcupines that are found in Africa. There's a few different types of them, um, but they are all found in Africa. And they spend their time down on the ground and going into dens to get away from a predator rather than going into a tree. All right, so we have a couple questions coming in. Right. Brad would like to know if Oscar is friendly. Oscar, uh, you know, we don't like to use the word friendly with our animals because they are wild animals, even if they are habituated to people being around. He is definitely curious and very inquisitive of new people. Um, and so sometimes that can, you know, come off as friendly. So he does enjoy going on programs and seeing new people. And, um, you know, he's not very shy. So um, he definitely is a more um, inquisitive porcupine. Awesome, and then we have, I believe you answered it already, but someone wanted to know how old Oscar is. He is almost two. Did he have a, did we do anything special for his birthdays? We did, so last um, June for his first birthday, we had a big party at Critter Corner, um, and hopefully we will be open again for his birthday so we can celebrate it again at Critter Corner with all our guests. That would be awesome. Uh, we had Brittany ask if you've ever been poked by his quills before. I usually, well, I really only get poked by his quills when I'm cleaning. Um, so there's a big myth about porcupine quills that they can shoot them out of their body. Um, and that is a myth, it's not true. Their quill is actually just a modified hair on their body. And they shed it just like they shed their hair. So sometimes when we're cleaning, uh, when we're cleaning out the drains in his room, there's a lot of quills in there. And when we're being quick and not paying too much attention, we do occasionally get some quills in our hand. Um, and that's really just our fault. It has nothing on him that he's doing. <laughs> Uh, speaking of quills, we've had hedgehogs and tenrics on the, the show before. Is there any difference between a hedgehog and tenric quill versus a porcupine? So um, they are unrelated animals. Like I said, he's a rodent, so not in the same family as hedgehogs and tenrics. And the quills are um, kind of similar but different. So they serve the same purpose. They're still for body protection. Um, predators don't want to bite a pokey animal. So um, it serves the same purpose, but um, they are a little bit different. So a porcupine quill is actually gonna have a tiny little hook or a barb on the end. So it sticks into things uh, like skin or um, like an animal's mouth really, really well. Whereas a hedgehog and a tenric, they're not gonna have that barb. Okay, awesome. We had Jana asking, how long do they typically live? What's their lifespan? Um, in human care, the porcupines can live into their mid-teens to 20s. Okay. And then we've had a couple questions of how much does Oscar weigh and then also how big can he get? So he is hopefully as big as he's going to get um, or else we're going to have to put him on a diet. <laughs> but <laughs> so he's full grown. This is a very healthy size for a porcupine. Um, he is about 20 pounds. Um, and he does get a little heavier leading into that winter since in the winter they would typically hibernate. Um, and then in the summer when he sheds a lot of his fluffy fur, um, he slims down a little bit. So there is a little bit of fluctuation in their weight, but he is full grown for the most part. Awesome, he's very beautiful. Is this the color that all North American porcupines will be? So a lot of porcupines are this dark brown, but there are also some blonder ones. So um, there is only one type of porcupine in North America, and they might look a little different. Some of them can be bigger, um, just depending on kind of their food availability and maybe the territory they're in charge of, they'll grow bigger to defend that better. And then they can be blonde, they can have darker fur, um, kind of a big variety in that hair color. Okay, and so we see how big and fluffy he is. How long are his quills underneath that fur? So his quills are only a couple inches, touching. So right here we have all of his fluff and his fur that keeps him warm. And then underneath that there are shorter, sharp quills. Um, and so in the summer when he loses all that fluff, you can see those quills better. They're probably about two inches long. Um, in the winter, they're a little more hidden. Versus our prehensile tails, like the ones that we've had in DC, their quills are They can be up to long. three or four inches long. Yes. Those are some very long quills. That they are. Let's see, is there anything, when it comes to food in the wild, what would, what would he eat in the wild? 
Um, a lot of the things he's eating now, so different types of tubers like potatoes, um, fruits like apples. He would eat vegetation in the trees, so leaves. Um, he also really likes seeds and nuts. Uh, one of his favorite treats is acorns. Um, and then he also likes peanuts and Brazil nuts, um, which he wouldn't encounter Brazil nuts in the wild, but um, some of those larger nuts, walnuts, acorns, uh, almonds, he also enjoys. And then um, chewing on bark and actually eating some of that bark is another big part of their diet. Cool. Is there anything when it comes to smell about these guys? Is there <laughs> anything that they use smell for? They are a very, very smelly animal. It's too bad we don't have smell of vision. <laughs> I'd love to share this with everybody. Um, they are very stinky, and that is a defense mechanism. Um, a lot of predators don't want to eat smelly food uh, because sometimes a bad smell can indicate that that animal is sick. So by smelling bad, they're kind of tricking predators into thinking that they're sick and um, they won't want to eat them. Also, predators that are aware of how difficult it might be to eat a porcupine recognize that scent and they know to kind of stay out of that area. They don't want to mess with a porcupine. Um, and part of the reason they get so stinky is they actually like, <laughs> they like to take baths in their urine and their fecal matter. That's fun. Um, which just makes everything worse. But that's also another defense mechanism. So kind of having that on their quill, if a predator gets quilled, it can give them a bad infection. Um, and so an, a predator is going to learn very, very quickly that last time I messed with one of those, I you know, had a sore in my paw for a long time. So I'm going to leave it alone for now. Speaking of predators, we had someone ask, what are his predators? Uh, what are his predators? So things he would encounter throughout his range would be coyotes and wolves. Um, some larger bird of prey might um, take advantage of a very small porcupine or maybe an already injured porcupine. Um, even though he has his quills all over the back of his body, his belly is very short for without any quills. So um, if he were to fall on his back, that would make him very vulnerable to a predator. Speaking of when they're small, this is just a question I have. When they're born, are they coming out as prickly as they are now? <laughs> so when they're born, they are born with the fluffy part of their fur and kind of these longer hairs that we see. And then their quills will develop as they age. I'm sure the mother very much appreciates yeah. that. <laughs> And was he going to be an animal that we would find out during the day or during the night? He is nocturnal. Um, there's a little bit of um, leeway on either side of that. They might be considered more crepuscular um, or coming out in the evening and early morning in some areas. But they are going to um, sleep for most of the day, the warmest part and the brightest part of the day. They'll be napping in their little dens. All right. And is there a favorite thing that he has here at the zoo? So I know he, you said that he likes romaine. Is there anything else here that is his favorite thing to either play um, or eat? He, he really likes uh, pine cones. Um, so when we get those that have fallen fresh from our trees, um, he really likes playing with those. And when we take him outside, he'll run around and he sniffs them all. He'll shove them up into his nose, take a nice long sniff, and then run on to the next one. Um, he seems to get very excited about the smell of fresh pine cones. Hey, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> smell of nature is awesome. And so we kind of saw while he was moving around, he was doing a good job of showing your example that he uses his tail to make sure mm -hmm. that there's room. So as he was backing up, he was putting his tail yeah, down kind, kind of like of a beaver. Uses it as a way to judge what's around him. All right. In his house, does he have a lot of things to climb? What type of stuff would we put in his house other than pine cones, as you mentioned? Yeah. So in his enclosure, we have um, a nice den box that we've mounted up on the ground. And that's where he likes to sleep uh, during the day. And then the rest of the area, we have branching and perching all off the ground. Um, and we replace that pretty frequently. Um, he loves to chew all of the bark off of it. So Sounds um, about right. <laughs> once that happens, it's time for all new branches. So uh, the top part of it is mostly perched. We'll hang things from the ceiling like puzzle feeders. Um, he has a fire hose hammock that he really enjoys. So we hang that from the ceiling as well. And then we also put some things down on the ground. Um, so like I said, he's curious and he likes to explore. So we'll put things down on the ground for him to explore as well. 
And he also, which is very abnormal for a porcupine, he loves water. So he a lot of times gets a sprinkler down on the ground to play in or a big pool of water to play in. He's actually probably our less smelly of all the porcupines because he likes to take baths, which I'm very grateful for. <laughs> um, it's not a typical behavior you see, so we kind of discovered it on accident. Um, he suddenly started playing in the hose when we were cleaning one day and we discovered it's something he really likes to do, so we offer him that as well. All right, Michaela had a question of what's the difference between a North American porcupine and a prehensile-tailed porcupine? So the North American porcupine um, is going to have fur on it. That's kind of the first thing you would notice. Um, since they live in areas that get cooler, they have this nice fluffy fur right here that we see. A prehensile-tailed porcupine is only going to have quills because they're native to rainforests where it's nice and warm and that fur would not be very uh, comfortable. And then the other thing that we're gonna notice is the tail. So we can see right here with Oscar's tail, it's pretty short and stubby um, and he can't hold on to anything with that tail. A prehensile tailed porcupine is going to be very uh, long tailed and they can actually use that tail as a fifth hand. So they can hold on to things with it um, and grasp things while they're climbing. Um, so it kind of helps them climb better that way. All right, do we have any prehensile tails other than, I know we had one in the DC for a little bit. Yeah, we used to have one in the Discovery Center. Um, she has now moved. And we also have one in the ambassador animal department. So Leo is our prehensile tailed porcupine that gets to travel um, and teach people about porcupines. Uh, we had a question from Carson of how often does he eat? How often does he eat? Um, if he had it his way, he would never stop eating. <laughs> but um, we feed him part of his food in the morning. Um, and then a lot of times we'll train with maybe some extra treats and then he gets um, dinner before we leave for the day. What are some of the behaviors that you train? For him right now, we have learned crating. Um, so he is trained to come down into his crate um, and that's kind of how he knows he's gonna go to a program or maybe get to go outside to play. He is also target trained, um, and this right here is a station that I've been starting to train. Um, so we uh, feed a lot on that station so that he starts learning that that is somewhere that is really important to go where he gets all the fun treats. Um, and then he is also, um, I'm working with our vets a little bit to work on his tactile training. So I'm working him, um, allowing me to touch him and um, kind of he'll let, let me help him stand up so I can see his belly and check his nails and that helps me take care of him um, more than fun things for him to learn. So there, we try to do a balance. Um, training things that are mentally stimulating um, and encouraging for them and then training things that just help us take care of them better. It's always good when your animals help you when it comes to the vet yes. aspect. <laughs> yeah, especially when they're so pokey. <laughs> yeah, definitely when they're pokey. Uh, Mara would like to know, does Oscar know who his predators are? Has he ever met any predator animals? So since he was born in human care, he really has no concept of a predator. Um, and that is, I think, partially why he's able to be so curious. Um, he doesn't see people as a threat. And um, anytime he encounters something new, he just wants to check it out and learn more about it. He really um, doesn't have much fear um, because he's, he's never had to have fear. So he just doesn't really display that very often. That's good to have a nice and curious animal. Yes. Works really well for us in the education it department. Does. Um, let's see, is there, at the zoo, I know we have Critter Corner, is there anywhere else that he would go around the zoo? Um, if your group has a program here at the zoo, sometimes um, Oscar will go and visit that program. And then Critter Corner, yeah, that's gonna be your next best bet to see him. And if you guys have been watching our videos on Facebook, you might have even also yes. seen Oscar exploring and meeting the seals and sea lions. Yes, we do like to, since he's so, so curious, we like to kind of explore new areas with him. And taking them around the zoo is good for smelling a bunch of different things mm -hmm. as well as seeing diff new things. Yeah, so it's actually really nice because it works as enrichment for both sets of animals. Um, so he's enriched by seeing an animal that he's never seen and then that animal is also enriched. So we had a couple new questions come mm -hmm. in. One wants to know, does he have quills? He so does he have quills, yep. So under this fur here are all his quills. 
And then we had Amy wanting, or Hagen actually wanted to know how long they live. I know we answered this earlier. But. So in human care, they can live into their uh, like later teens, early 20s maybe. Awesome. All right, if there are no other new questions coming in, you guys are welcome to keep asking us questions and we will answer them uh, after this program is done. But otherwise, we are happy that you guys came to see us and we would like you guys to share and comment and do anything. Make sure your friends can see this awesome video as well. And we'll see you guys on Tuesday for our next education station. So thank you, Julia. Yeah, thank thanks you, for Oscar. having me. We will see you guys next week. Bye.